So let's get a definition out there to, for diving into this. So gliomas are the most prevalent primary intrinsic tumors of the brain and spinal cord. Histologically, they share characteristics of normal glial cells. So we're talking about cells like astrocytes and oligodendroglia. However, rather gliomas originate from normal glial cells, glial or neural precursors or stem cells or other cell types still remains a topic of investigation. If you just quickly Google glioma MRI, you're gonna quickly get a sense of the diversity of uh, tumors that are out there. So the way they present clinically, the way they look radiographically, and of course the types of glioma is incredibly diverse. So uh, that's why we have a lot of uh, colleagues out there who, who really focus just on gliomas and, and are truly glioma uh, surgeons because it does take a lot of focus and expertise to, to handle this um, category of tumors. So what are the possible gliomas? I think the best way to kind of define them is to look at the World Health Organization's classification scheme. And I just wanna point out that in 2016, there was an update for that classification. And that was updated from about 10 years ago. And you can see the red additions here with lots of changes. And if you just kind of step back, you'll see that in red, the most common things are genetic mutations. So for the very first time, we are now using uh, genomic data to, to really define uh, meaning gliomas. So uh, very quickly, let me just skim through this list here. So on the left, here are the diffuse astrocytic and oligodendroglioma tumors, so diffuse astrocytomas anaplastic astrocytomas, glioblastomas, and you'll see they're fur further subdivided into IDH mutations and wild type. We'll talk more about that later. There are a few uh, sort of oddities under glioblastoma, which are uh, referred to their histology. Moving down the list, there's this unusual uh, diffuse midline glioma in the younger population that has commonly has this specific mutation, KH, I'm sorry, H3K27M. Here's your oligodendrogliomas, and uh, they can be uh, defined by IDH mutations and 1P19Q chromosomal deletions. Of course, there are anaplastic versions of that. There are these mixed versions moving over to the right. Here are some more astrocytic or glioma tumors like the polycytic astrocytoma, subependymoma, giant cell astrocytomas, pleomorphic xanthoastrocytomas. Ependymal tumors are on this list. We're not gonna talk about those, um, but just keep that in mind, there, there they are. Other uh, gliomas include these chordoid gliomas and a few other odd ones. And then there's a list of mixed neuronal and glial tumors. So the bulk of these gliomas uh, are here on the left, and, and that's really what we'll focus on just for this uh, lecture. So that classification scheme uh, defines those tumors as we were just going through, but then defines their who grades. And so the grading system is important to, to think about. So there's grades one, two, three, and four that you've heard before. And just to quickly remind you, so grade ones, these are Tumors that have low proliferative potential, uh, very discreet on MRIs and in the brain, and the possibility of curing them just simply with good surgical resection. Grade two tumors uh, have more atypical cells, more infiltrating nature, but still have a low mitotic activity. They do recur more frequently than grade one tumors. Some of these grade two tumors can progress to higher grades of malignancy. Grade three tumors. So this is where we start to see histological evidence of malignancy, such as nuclear atypia, anaplasia, increased mitoses, much more infiltrative capacity. So these tumors require uh, post-operative aggressive adjuvant therapies like radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And then of course, the very common grade four these are the most mitotically active, have necrosis, have a lot of neovascularity, very infiltrative, rapidly uh, progressive, and require aggressive treatment and universally fatal. 
So all of those gliomas that we just went through on the prior slide can be graded one through four. And that's very important to help with prog prognosis and uh, with uh, thinking about appropriate therapies. Um, I threw in this slide uh, because I thought this was a good illustration of something uh, from this classification scheme. So as, as I was telling you, all these uh, gliomas can be classified uh, by the specific type of glioma and then by the, the WHO grade system, but it's not a perfect system. So for example, some of these tumors uh, correlate very, very well with what you would expect from the grade that they're placed in. So the way they represent it here on this uh, picture is there's a very clear line demarcating uh, the green color from the orange color. So tumors that are correctly diagnosed and put in this category clearly behave like grade one tumors. So we have a good classification scheme for these tumors. If you go to the right, over here, you can see that there's a blending of the color. And so what they're trying to suggest is uh, we, our classification of these tumors uh, is, is poor. There's a poor correlation between what we are calling these tumors and their, and their behavior. So in other words, uh, uh, we need a lot more work out there. So that's another reason why I'm throwing it out there to you guys is if you're looking for areas to explore research, uh, these tumors need better classification schemes so that we can place them in the proper grading system uh, to help with prognosis. But of course, that further study will lead to understanding those tumors better and better therapeutics. So why use this WHO system? Um, it's a very reproducible grading system, strongly predictive of patient survival. So as a rough rule of thumb, for example, if, if you can place one of those types of gliomas in the category of grade two, then you can predict the overall survival pretty well. Uh, likewise for the other grades. These grades correlate with uh, prognostic factors. So here's a list of factors that have been established for gliomas for years, if not decades, that um, prognosticate uh, very well. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.